Welcome back to class. We are in chapter 3 and we just uh, analyzed what, what happens if the government increases government spending by 100 units and it is a case that the GDP increases by 400 units. We were able to derive this result from a graphical analysis but also from a more formal analysis. Now we would like to analyze this relationship also by computing the so-called multiplier, uh, the income multiplier after a fiscal expansion. And we expect that this multiplier takes a value of 4 because when the government increases government spending by 100 units, then GDP increases by 400 units. So when the government would increase government spending by one unit, then GDP should increase by four units. Let's check how we can derive this result. We start with the equilibrium income level in equation number nine, and then we try to get rid of this brackets here, and we multiply through by this fraction. Afterwards, uh, we have to compute the total differential of equation 10. We assume here that the parameters are always constant. Therefore, C1 does not change. This is a very important assumption. Parameters do not change. Parameters are constant. And therefore, we don't have to differentiate with respect to C1. We have to write a d in front of each variable. So we are writing a d in front of y, a d in front of c0, and a d in front of the taxes, a d in front of investment, and a d in front of government spending. Afterwards, we consider that only government spending changes, so dg is positive. All other variables are constant, so that their changes are equal to zero. For example, the autonomous component of consumption is constant, it does not change, and therefore dc0, the change in the autonomous component of consumption, is equal to zero. Also, the taxes are constant, therefore the change in taxes is equal to zero. Investment is constant, it does not change, Therefore, the change in investment is equal to zero. Hence, uh, dc0 is equal to zero, dt is equal to zero, and di is equal to zero. So all these three first term, they drop out, and we are left with dy is equal to 1 over 1 minus c1 times dg. Now we put dg on the other hand side of the equation. And then we get the information that uh, the income multiplier after a fiscal expansion in form of an increase in government spending is positive. 1 over 1 minus C1 is positive because this denominator is positive. C1 is between 0 and 1, so the denominator has to be positive. Uh, this implies that when the government increases government spending, uh, the GDP level will increase. There is a positive relationship between these two variables. How large is the effect? Let's compute 1 over 1 minus 0 0.75. The denominator takes a value of 0 0.25. And 1 over 0 0.25 is equal to 4. This 4 has to be interpreted in the following way. When the government increases government spending by one unit, then GDP will increase by four units. The next topic on our agenda is the so-called Havelmoor theory. We assume that in the initial situation, the government budget is balanced. And now the government is increasing government spending and is raising taxes simultaneously to finance the additional expenses. Therefore, the change in government spending is equal to the change in the taxes. 
then we have two effects on GDP. On the one hand side, the government increases government spending. This has a positive effect on GDP. But the tax increase reduces disposable income of private households and therefore private consumption. This has a negative effect on GDP. Now we would like to know what are the overall effects of this increase in government spending, which is financed by an increase in taxes. We will solve this question in three steps. In the first step, we want to know by how much does GDP change in case that government increases government spending by one unit. So we have to compute the government spending multiplier. In part B, we are asking the question by how much does GDP change in case that taxes increase by one unit? We should compute the tax multiplier. And then in part C, we are combining these two assignments and we are asking the question by how much does GDP change if government spending increases by one unit and taxes increase by one unit simultaneously? We should compute the balanced budget multiplier. Let's proceed. We are already familiar with part A because we did that already. When we start with uh, the um, equilibrium condition for our GDP level, equation 15, then we are getting rid of these brackets here. We are multiplying through by this fraction. And then we take the total differential. Afterwards, we have to consider that only government spending changes and all other changes are equal to zero. When we now put dg on the other hand side of the equation, we once more get the income multiplier after an increase in government spending. And uh, the GDP is up by four units in case that government spending is up by one unit. Let's have a look at question number B, part B of this assignment. We once more start with a total differential. And now we are assuming that the government increases taxes so that only the variable T changes and all other changes are equal to zero. Therefore, also three terms drop out, like this first term drops out, the third and the fourth term drops out, and we are left with this relationship. dy is equal to minus c1 over one minus c1 dt. Now we can also put dt on the other hand side of the equation, and we get this relationship. C1 is positive, 1 minus C1 is also positive, but there is a negative sign in front of this fraction so that the whole relationship is negative. Um, this has to be interpreted in the following way. In case that the government increases the taxes, then this has a negative impact on GDP. When the government increases taxes, then GDP will decrease. By how much? Let's plug in the numbers we have. C1 is equal to 0.75. So we get dy over dt is equal to minus 0.75. And then this denominator takes a value of 0.25. So that the overall expression is a minus 3. This has to be interpreted in the following way. In case that the government increases taxes by one unit, then GDP will decrease by three units. Let's combine part A and part B. In part A, we learned when the government increases government spending by one unit, GDP is up by four units. And in part B, we learned that when the government increases the taxes by one unit, then GDP will decrease by three units. When we combine these two effects, then it should be the case that when the government increases government spending, 
and finances this increase in government spending by an increase in taxes, the effect should be equal to 1. And this is the so-called Havamo theorem, which we'll derive now in part C. Starting point of our analysis is the total differential. The government increases taxes and also increases government spending so that T and G change, but all other variables are constant so that their changes are equal to zero. So the first term and the third term drop out, but we are left with this uh, term which depends on taxes and this term which depends on government spending. Now we have to consider that the change in taxes is equal to the change in government spending. Therefore, we can insert this dg here instead of dt. So we are inserting the right-hand side here dg in this expression, and then we get to this equation dy is equal to this negative term and this positive term. Now we can combine uh, these two fractions, which is very easy because we already have a common denominator. Therefore, we can combine this positive one and this negative minus C1, and we get dy is equal to 1 minus C1 over 1 minus C1. In the next step, we put dg on the other hand side of the equation, and this 1 minus C1 cancels out against that 1 minus C1. Therefore, we get here dy over dg, which is derived under the assumption that this increase in government spending is financed by an increase in taxes, that this uh, multiplier takes the value of 1, which is positive. Hence, we have um, derived the so-called Havelmo theorem that an increase in government spending, which is financed by taxes, has indeed uh, like a positive effect on GDP. You can also uh, prove that by coming up with a numerical example. Um, we have adjusted our basic scenario a little bit uh, so that in the initial situation, uh, the government budget is indeed balanced. Taxes are equal to 300 and government spending is also equal to 300, so the government budget is balanced. How large is the GDP level in this situation? We can plug in the numbers we have, and in the end, we get the information that here GDP is equal to 1,600. Then we are increasing government spending by 100 units, and we are also increasing the taxes by 100 units, so from 300 to 400. Since we know that when the government increases government spending by one unit and increases the taxes by one unit, it will have an effect on GDP which is equal to one, we would assume here that this increase in government spending by 100 unit, with the, which is financed by an increase in taxes of 100 units, should have uh, the, the same effect on GDP uh, which means GDP should increase by 100 units. So uh, we are increasing here taxes by 100 units and government spending by 100 units. And then uh, in the end, we get the information that GDP increases to the level of 1,700. So indeed, uh, GDP increased by 100 units. This is in line with the Havelmo theory. Also here, I would like to give you some time to digest. I'll stop the video here and give you a few minutes to check what was going on in this part of chapter three. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye bye.